Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Chiswick Auction. So um, as you guys know, I've got um, my next Arms and Armour and Military Auction coming up on the 29th of May, Wednesday. Um, and I'll put a link below to the catalogue and uh, how you can bid on anything in that auction should you be interested to. So one thing I want to just look at in this video is this absolutely fantastic mid-Victorian 74th Highland Regiment Officers Dirk. So first of all, where did Highland Dirks come from? Well, quite simply, they came from bollock knives or bollock daggers, which uh, everyone watching this channel will probably know all about. Um, so it's a particular type of medieval dagger that was popular in the 14th, 15th and 16th centuries. And during the 16th century, uh, towards the end of the 16th century, the bollock knife or bollock dagger diverged off. So if we look at the Mary Rose period uh, bollock knives, they diverged off in Scotland into a sort of national style. Um, and you can actually see on some of these dirks a, uh, a division line down the centre there where you can actually see the the balls as it were of the uh, bollock dagger um, merging and uh, we end up with this particular well this is a 19th century one obviously but we end up with a highland dirk now originally highland dirks and in fact not just highland dirks but many types of medieval knife and dagger had a so-called by knife um, fitted into the side of the scabbard. You could see that this has got two things, but I'll talk about those in a second. So in the original medieval and renaissance ones, we often find a by knife. And what is that for? Well, quite simply, it's for eating. It's an eating knife. And I suppose they thought, well, I've got to, I'm going to wear a fighting knife, but I also want to have my eating knife with me as well. Why don't I just attach the eating knife to the fighting knife? And we find that, of course, with swords as well. So if you look at things like the Langmesser, we find that the Langmesser, or hunting swords as well, sometimes have the by knife fitted into the front of the scabbard and this is just the same thing it just means that you can have your eating knife next to your fighting knife onto one scabbard so you're kind of being efficient as it were but uh, in the 16th and 17th centuries forks started to come along um, and so when forks came along given that dirks were still around and still being worn um, they decided to stick a fork on there as well so if I carefully take this out you'll notice that this is a fork and this, we can just carefully get it out, is a knife. So that's your eating knife and actually goes that way around. There we go. That's your eating knife and that is your eating fork. Um, and this is your fighting <coughs> dirk, as it were. I'll talk about the actual dirk itself a bit more in a second. Um, so this particular one obviously is very, very ornate. You'll see the big um, uh, stones it's got in the ends, the pommels essentially, the pommel caps of each of the implements, the, the dirk, the knife and the fork. Um, and so this has become pretty much a dress item by this period. Not to say that they were never carried in conflict, but I think predominantly they weren't. If we look at photos from the Crimean War, which is similar date to this, um, this dirk here, if we look at photos from the Crimean War, you can see Highland um, officers wearing their undress uniforms with their sword, but they're not wearing their dirks for the most part. Um, but they did wear dirks for full dress, for dress occasions, for parade and things like this. So they become incredibly ornate, um, and you could even say fragile as well. And if you were running around on the battlefield, you can imagine that these things would fly out and get lost pretty quickly uh, with this particular style of design. But nevertheless, the blades of these things were still made as uh, potentially as fighting blades. They're certainly made as good quality as a, you would want of a fighting blade. So if I just dispense with the scabbard for a second, so very, very nice thing. Um, you know, just before I do, I'll just point out if I get the camera to focus on here, we've got Assay, which is one of their battle honours with an elephant underneath, uh, the symbol of the uh, 74th up there, and the number uh, there we go, number 74, conveniently telling us uh, what regiment this is for. Um, and uh, the dirk itself is actually a pretty nice weapon. Now you'll notice it's got nothing in w by way of a guard, and some people might think of this as a deficiency. But you have to remember, and it's a bit like um, a Gurkha cookery to this extent, you don't have a guard here, but you have a swell here. And when you're holding, when you're gripping this around there, that swell in the middle of your hand, much like we find on tolwars and as mentioned on, on uh, cookeries and certain other types of knives and sword throughout history, when you've got this swell in the middle, your hand can't travel up, it can't slip up onto the blade because the swell locks into the middle of your hand. So actually it's a very effective way of not having 
having to have a projecting guard which might get caught up in your clothes or be uncomfortable to wear um, or interfere with the scabbard. So you can have no guard here but you can have that swell there and it keeps your hand locked in. You'll also notice this very characteristic um, cap essentially, horizontal cap. And this is something particular to the earliest dirks and dudgeons that we find from Scotland from about the year 1500. I think the earliest documented one is from about 1502, 1505, something like that. But we start to see that their form of the bollock dagger, which develops into the, what we now know as the, as the dirk, very early on gets this flat cap at the top. Um, and they retain that right the way through to the 19th century like this, and indeed through to the 20th century, because these are still items that are worn as part of a Highland officer's dress. Now, the blades. Let's talk a little bit about the blades. You'll notice that this example is uh, multi fullered It's got two fullers on each side, and it's got a lot of etching on it. I'll talk about the etching in a second. Um, but fundamentally, these are almost always, not always, but almost always, um, one-sided blade. So this is completely blunt, maybe except for just at the tip where it has a small false edge, but they're basically completely blunt on the back with one long cutting edge. Um, and they were sometimes, not always, there is a, a preconception, there is a misconception, shall we say, that these were often made or always made of broken sword blades. Now that's a slight misconception because in fact many of these dirk blades were made as dirk blades, certainly by the 19th century, but even the earlier ones. But what seems to be the case is that in Scotland it wasn't that easy to get good quality blades for, for people of all statuses and all wealths. And so when a, a broken when you ended up with a broken sword blade, they were often repurposed. So it's not that all dirks are made of broken sword blades, but it is true to say that many dirks have shortened sword blades or broken sword blades made into dirks. Um, so their back edge, essentially, it's like the tip of a back sword. Um, so it is symmetrical, it is straight, but it is single-edged. Um, obviously, you can see it has essentially a spear point, and that's fairly characteristic of the dirk. Some dirks have a point which is more towards the rear, more towards the blunt back. Uh, but most of them really have a spear tip. So they're very effective thrusting implements with a front edge as well. Uh, this particular example is etched all over. So as I said, I would talk about the etching. This being a 19th century um, regimental item, like the swords of the period, they threw acid etching at, at these things because these were very expensive, very um, costly dress items that you'd probably only ever buy one of in your military career and so they wanted them to be as ornate and fancy as possible and obviously the more money you had remember officers buy their own equipment the more money you had the more fancy a version of one of these you could buy and that would be like showing off it'd be like like having a nice watch or um, a particularly fine uniform um, and this particular one being for the 74th Highlanders actually has etching all the way up the blade and I'll try and get it to uh, focus on the blade. Let's see if I can do that. You'll actually see if you can make it out. There we go. All of these are scrolls with words in them and those words are battle honours. That is, they are battles at which the 74th Highlanders fought. Um, and on the other side we have the regimental badge and VR for Victoria Regina. Um, so essentially, and we've got the elephant for assay, which is their kind of symbol of the 74th Highlanders with the Latin letters LXXIV for 74th and the maker's name underneath as well. So this is etched all over with everything you need to know about this particular dirk. It tells you about the regiment, it tells you about the regimental badge, their emblem, the elephant, it tells you about the battle honours. Um, which incidentally includes Syringa Patan, um, uh, uh, Bajados, uh, Vittoria, so lots of Napoleonic and Indian uh, battles um, etched on there. So an illustrious regiment, an illustrious object that also has its roots really in the Middle Ages. Uh, it develops from a medieval dagger into a 16th, 17th century dirk and then really the overall design of the dirk and its um, scabbard 
didn't change an awful lot from the 17th century until the 19th century. And the 19th century ones really have become dress items, but nevertheless the blades are still hardened and proved and very good quality, and you could use them as a weapon if, if you wanted to. Uh, anyway, I hope that's been somewhat interesting. And once again, um, the auction's coming up on the 29th of May at Chiswick Auctions. Links below. Um, go and have a look. Maybe you'll find something in the catalogue that you uh, fancy. Maybe indeed it will be this. Uh, but thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Cheers, folks.